हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन मैट्रिक्स एनालिसिस विद एप्लीकेशंस नाउ टुडे इज लेक्चर बेस्ड ऑन आइगन वैल्यूज एंड आइगन वेक्टर्स दैट इफ वी हैव अ गिवन मैट्रिक्स ए देन हाउ कैन यू फाइंड इट्स आइगन वैल्यूज एंड द कोरिस्पोंडिंग आइगन वेक्टर्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल व्हाट आइगन वैल्यूज एंड आइगन वेक्टर्स आर सो लेट वी बी अ वेक्टर स्पेस ओवर द फील्ड एफ एंड टी बी अ लीनियर ऑपरेटर ऑन वी okay that is t is a linear transformation from v to v a non zero vector v belongs to v is called an eigen vector of t if there exists a scalar lambda belongs to f such that t v equal to lambda v so if we have a linear operator t and we have a uh, non zero vector v in v and there exists a lambda belongs to field such that uh, tv equals to lambda v then we say that uh, lambda is a eigen value and the corresponding eigen vector is v now a square matrix a may be viewed as a linear operator t and is defined as tx equals to ax where x belongs to v okay so if you have a linear operator then linear operator uh, then a matrix can be viewed as a linear operator also now now let uh, let us define a matrix a which is a square matrix of order n then if we consider a system of homogeneous equations ax equals to lambda x then the value of uh, lambda for which the system of linear equations has non trivial solutions are called eigen values or the characteristic values of a and the corresponding non zero vectors x are called eigen vectors or the characteristic vectors of a since uh, since every matrix can be viewed as a linear operator t so in the previous uh, definition we have replaced this t by a matrix a here and this x is in v this is a scalar lambda in field okay so what i want to say basically suppose you have a a matrix a which is of order n cross n okay then uh, if uh, ax is equals to lambda x where x is not equal to 0 then this lambda is called this lambda is called eigen value of a and uh, x is called corresponding eigen vector corresponding corresponding eigen vector of a or eigen vector corresponding to lambda okay now uh, we are having uh, ax equal to lambda x so this can be written as ax minus lambda x equal to 0 okay now this can be written as a minus lambda into i times x equal to 0 where i is an identity matrix now what we are having basically we are having a uh, we are having a minus lambda i x equal to 0 means we are having system of uh, uh, homogeneous uh, linear equations because right hand side is zero okay now now since x is not equal to 0 as we already defined in the definition x is not equal to 0 so this means uh, if we are taking this as a linear operator t if we take a minus lambda i as a linear operator t then tx equal to 0 that means that means uh, and x is not equal to 0 that means the nullity the null space the nullity of uh, this uh, matrix or this uh, operator is uh, greater than equal to 1 okay because Uh, because x is not equal to 0 means uh, uh, because this means nullity is not zero and nullity is not zero means it is greater than equal to 1 now what is what is the dimension of uh, dimension of a minus lambda i of course dimension of a minus lambda i is n so rank by rank nullity theorem the rank of uh, this a minus lambda i plus uh, nullity of uh, a minus lambda i must be equal to dimension of uh, matrix or operator which is n 
so this implies uh, rank of a minus lambda i must be equals to n minus nullity of a minus lambda i and since nullity is greater than equal to 1 this means this is less than equal to n minus 1 and since rank is less than equal to n minus 1 less than equal to n minus 1 this means in the equilion form of this matrix at least one zero one row is there which is having all zero elements and that means this implies determinant of a minus lambda i must be zero now this this equation determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero is called a characteristic polynomial uh, this will give a characteristic polynomial in lambda characteristic polynomial of lambda okay okay now now this this is a matrix of order n cross n so determinant so this determinant will will give a polynomial of degree n in lambda okay so so what what we are having now so now if we if we visualize the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to 0 that means that means uh, this determinant is equal to 0 okay you see if we are taking determinant of a minus lambda i equal to 0 so it implies that uh, determinant of uh, a is this matrix you see a11 a12 if you are taking this matrix uh, as a and a n1 up to a n n okay minus lambda times i is identity matrix So, when you take determinant put it equal to 0, so this is nothing but determinant of you see only the only this lambda will be subtracted from the diagonal elements because all other entries are 0. So, this will be determinant of a11 minus lambda a12 and so on up to a1n then a21 a22 minus lambda then a2n and so on a n1 a n2 and so on up to a n n minus lambda this determinant is equal to 0. So, this will give us a polynomial in lambda and that polynomial is called characteristic polynomial. Okay. So, this is basically gives minus 1 raised to power n lambda raised to power n minus uh, say c 1 lambda raised to power n minus 1 plus c 2 lambda raised to power n minus 2 minus and so on plus minus 1 raised to power n into c n is equal to 0. Okay, because when you when you expand this in terms of lambda, so you will get a polynomial in of degree n in lambda. Now, now if you uh, carefully observe this determinant, you see when you open from the first element, you see if you uh, take a 1 1 minus lambda, then you take then you delete this row and this this row and this column. So, this will be the remaining uh, remaining I mean determinant. minus a 1 2. Now, when you take when you expand from this element you delete this column and this row that means the two values of two linear uh, factors of lambda are not coming in this uh, in this expansion. So, that means the, this expansion will contain uh, uh, maximum lambda raised to power n minus 2 because because when you take when you uh, expand from this you are deleting this row and this column. So, two factors of lambda are not coming in uh, are not coming in the expansion that means the maximum power of lambda which is coming from this uh, term is maximum power of lambda which is coming from this term is lambda raised to power and minus 2. Similarly, if you take a 1 3. So, here will be something a 3 3 minus lambda and when you delete this column and this row then again two uh, factors of lambda are not coming. So, that means uh, maximum power of lambda which are coming from this uh, term is lambda raised to power and minus 2. Similarly, from the other terms. So, what we can conclude that uh, the remaining terms will contain uh, say alpha 1 uh, lambda raised to power n minus 1 and so lambda raised to power n minus 2 and so on. So, that means uh, the power of lambda raised to power n and power of lambda raised to power n minus 1 are coming only from the first determinant. 
now if if you see here again if you see here now if you open from this is ok if you open from this here is something a 3 3 minus lambda is again here if you open from this element again you will delete this column and this row so 2 powers of lambda are not uh, are still not uh, here uh, i mean uh, not coming so that means you see if you take a 1 1 minus lambda if you expand this determinant then it is a 2 2 minus lambda and again some determinant plus and minus a 2 3 and determinant of some other thing which is in which uh, 2 power 2 powers of lambda are not there ok. So, that means uh, that means it will contain maximum lambda raised to power and minus 2 and minus 3 because because this the uh, this determinant is having lambda raised to power and minus 1 1 1 factor is already outside. So, this determinant is having lambda raised to power and minus 1 and 2 factors are not coming that means the maximum power which this is this element is having is lambda raised to power and minus 3 and when you multiply this with lambda. So, it will be having lambda raised to power and minus 2. So, that means what I want to say basically that uh, when you expand similarly the entire determinant. So, lambda raised to power n and lambda raised to power n minus 1 are only coming in the product of the uh, diagonal elements. When you similarly uh, try to expand this entire determinant, so lambda raised to power n and lambda raised to power n minus 1 is coming only from the product of the uh, determinant diagonal elements. Okay. So, and and all other and the lambda raised to power n minus 2, lambda raised to power n minus 3 are from the all from all the components, maybe from all the components, all the elements. So, that means that means a uh, coefficient of lambda raised to power n is simply coefficient of lambda raised to power n in simply a 1 1 minus lambda, a 2 2 minus lambda and so on a n n minus lambda and it is simply minus 1 raised to power n. You carefully see it is simply minus 1 raised to power n and similarly if you want to see coefficient of lambda raised to power n minus 1, it is simply coefficient of lambda raised to power n minus 1 in again this product a 1 1 minus lambda a 2 2 minus lambda and so on up to a n n minus lambda. So, what is the coefficient of lambda minus uh, lambda raised to power n minus 1 in this? It is simply a 1 1 plus a 2 2 plus and so on a n n. You can you can simply see the uh, the sum of uh, these elements a 1 1 plus a 2 2 and so on up to a n n will be the coefficient of lambda raised to power n minus 1. Okay. So, what basically now we are having, we are having determinant of a minus lambda i is something like minus 1 raised to power n and it is, uh, uh, it is lambda raised to power n minus c 1 lambda raised to power n minus 2 and minus 1 plus c 2 lambda raised to power n minus 2 minus and so on minus 1 raised to power n c n. So, this is equal to this. Now, let uh, so, how many roots this equation will be having? This equation is will be having n roots because uh, the it is of n degree polynomial. So, let uh, lambda 1, lambda 2 and so on up to lambda n are the roots uh, be the roots of this equation. Okay. So, if lambda these are the roots then what is the sum of the roots? You can simply see the sum of the roots is simply ok, th this is the equation. So, so some of the roots of uh, this will be simply uh, uh, negative of minus c 1 ok, it is minus negative of uh, negative of uh, uh, minus c 1 and this is equal to basically this is equal to uh, you see the coefficient of lambda raised to power n minus 1 is simply this. So, this is a 1 1 plus a 2 2 and so on up to a n n and this is called a trace of a matrix trace of a matrix a. So, what we have concluded we have concluded that uh, sum of eigenvalues 
is nothing but the trace of the matrix that means sum of the Ragnar elements the first property. The second property is now this this result that this is equal to this holds for every lambda for any lambda ok. So, this hold for lambda equal to 0 also and when you substitute lambda equal to 0 we will get a determinant of A as equal to C n ok as C n. Now, if you find product of uh, roots for this equation product of roots. So, product of roots are lambda 1 lambda 2 up to lambda n and that is simply equal to uh, you see it is uh, minus 1 raised to power degree of equation last term upon first term which is nothing but C n ok C n upon minus 1 raised to power n and that is simply equal to determinant of A. So, this implies product of eigenvalues is nothing but determinant of A. So, uh, we have noted here two important properties of eigenvalues the one one property is that the sum of the eigenvalues is equal to trace of the matrix that is the sum of the diagonal elements and the second property is the product of the eigenvalues is equal to the determinant of the matrix A ok. So, the sum of the eigenvalues simply equal to trace of the matrix and the product of the eigenvalues is simply the determinant of A. Now, let us let us discuss this problem the first problem is uh, let us consider this matrix A which is 1 minus 1 1 1 let us find its eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors. So, the matrix A is simply 1 minus 1 1 1. So, you can simply write uh, A minus lambda i determinant this must be 0 for the characteristic polynomial or for finding the roots of the equation ro roots of the latent roots or the characteristic roots of this matrix A. So, this is nothing but 1 minus lambda minus 1 1 1 minus lambda determinant equal to 0 and this implies 1 minus lambda whole square plus 1 should be 0 or 1 minus lambda square is equals to minus 1 that implies 1 minus lambda is equals to plus minus eta or lambda equal to 1 plus minus iota. So, the two roots of two eigenvalues of this equations are 1 plus iota and 1 minus iota these are the eigenvalues. So, let us find uh, corresponding eigenvectors. So, first we find eigenvector eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals to say 1 minus iota ok. So, how we will find that you can simply see that a minus uh, lambda i times x must be equal to 0 this we have already seen that uh, this x is a cross uh, is the eigenvector cross point to this lambda. So, this implies now we will substitute lambda as uh, lambda as a 1 minus iota. So, this is a minus 1 minus iota times uh, iota, iota times identity matrix into x equal to 0. So, this implies now now when you when you take uh, 1 minus lambda here. So, it is uh, you can simply take lambda here as 1 minus iota. So, it is iota 1 and it is 1 and uh, it is again iota it is minus 1 it is iota and x is x 1 x 2 equal to 0 0. So, uh, this implies now you can uh, you can apply some elementary row operation this in this matrix so, simply first interchange these two rows it is 1 iota iota minus 1 x 1 x 2 will remain as it is interchange these two also 0 0. Now, this implies you can make 0 here with the help of this by applying the uh, elementary row operation r 2 this means r 2 minus iota times r 1. When you apply this elementary row operations here it is 1 iota it is 0 it is uh, again 0 and it is x 1 x 2 0 0. So, this implies x 1 plus uh, iota x 2 equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, this this give infinitely many solutions of x 1 and x 2 ok. Uh, you can substitute any any value of x 1 you can find corresponding value of x 2 such that x 1 x 2 should not equal to 0 of course ok. So, one such value is uh, one such x 1 is you can simply take you see you see x is what x is x 1 x 2 
you can take x1 as minus iota x2 from here and it is x2. So, it is x2 times minus iota and 1 where x2 is any uh, real number. So, so uh, if you are talking about number of linearly independent eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal to 1 minus iota, so it is 1. So, you can pick any one linearly independent eigenvector from this uh, because, because it gives infinitely many eigenvectors. You can pick out any one any one eigenvector. So, we can say that that vector is linearly independent eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals to 1 minus iota. So, we can say that uh, corresponding to corresponding to uh, lambda equal to 1 minus iota the linearly independent eigenvector is say minus iota 1 transpose. Now, similarly you will take uh, uh, lambda is equal, is equal to 1 plus iota and we can find out the corresponding linearly independent eigenvector on the same lines. Okay. Now, let us consider second problem here the matrix B is 0, 0, 2, 0, uh, 2, 0 and this matrix. It is given to us that the one of the eigenvalue of this matrix B is 4 then we have to find the remaining two eigenvalues and also the corresponding eigenvectors of B. So, let us discuss this problem now. Here the matrix A is simply 0, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0 and 2, 0, 3. Now, 1 lambda is 4, it is given to us. Say lambda 1 is 4. Now, we know that the trace is equal to the sum of the eigenvalues. So, let us suppose the other two eigenvalues are lambda 2, lambda 3. It is of order 3 cross 3. So, it will be having 3 eigenvalues. So, sum of the eigenvalues is equal to a trace of the matrix that is 5, 0 plus 2 plus 3. Now, lambda 1 is 4. So, this implies lambda 2 plus lambda 3 is 1. Now, the product of the eigenvalues we know that what the eigenvalue is simply determinant of A. Now, the determinant of A is simply when you uh, when you simply open this uh, matrix I mean determinant then you simply get it minus 8. Okay. Now, it is 4. So, this implies lambda 2 lambda 3 will be minus 2. So, solving these two equations we can easily find lambda 2 and lambda 3. So, it is clearly as we as we as we are seeing it is lambda 2 is 2 and lambda 3 is minus 1. So, sum is 1 and the product is minus 2. So, the other two eigenvalues are 2 and minus 1. Okay. So, now, now we can say that this matrix has eigenvalues 4, 2 and minus 1. Now, we have to find out the corresponding eigenvectors. Let us suppose we have to find out the eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal to 4. Similarly, we can find uh, eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal to 2 and uh, lambda equal to minus 1. So, let us find eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal to 4. How you will find that? This is a minus lambda i x equal to 0 again. So, this implies a minus 4 i into x equal to 0. So, this implies minus 4 0 2 this is uh, 0 minus 2 0, this is 2 0 minus 1 and x is x which is equal to 0, this implies. Now, we will try to convert this into its equilibrium form. Okay. So, we will make 0 here with the help of this, this is already 0, we will make 0 here with the help of this. So, which operation we will apply r 3 2 r 3 plus half of r 1. So, this is minus 4 0 2, this is 0 minus 2 0, this is 0 0, this plus half of this is again 0. Okay. Now, this implies, this implies minus 4 x 1 plus 0 into x 2 plus 2 into x 3 equal to 0. If you are taking x as x 1 x 2 x 3, you substitute it here and we uh, multiply these two uh, matrices then we simply get these equations and minus 2 x 2 equal to 0. So, this implies x 2 equal to 0 
and uh, x3 as 2x1. So, what is the corresponding Eigen vector? Corresponding Eigen vector will be uh, you can say you can see it is uh, x1, 0 and 2x1. So, it is x1 times 1, 0, 2. So, again there are infinitely many Eigen vectors corresponding to lambda equal to 4. But if you are talking about number of linearly independent Eigen vector corresponding to lambda equal to 4, so, so that is 1. You can pick any one uh, Eigen vector from this uh, space. So, we can say that is a linearly independent Eigen vector corresponding to lambda equal to 4. Similarly, we can find out Eigen vector corresponding to lambda equal to 2 and lambda equal to minus 1. Okay. Now, if lambda is an Eigen value of a matrix A and x is a corresponding Eigen vector, then we have the following properties. Now, it is very easy to see these properties you see here. See, if if A has a Eigen vector uh, Eigen value lambda and corresponding Eigen vector is x that means, A x equal to lambda x. Now, if you want to calculate the Eigen, Eigen values of uh, alpha A, where alpha is a non-zero scalar, then how we can find? You simply multiply these two by alpha, both sides by alpha. So, we can simply see that uh, we can simply see that uh, this alpha a has an Eigen value alpha lambda and the corresponding Eigen vector is a uh, corresponding Eigen vector is x. Now, if you want for a square you see a x equal to lambda x x not equal to 0. If you multiply both sides by a it is a into a x equals to lambda a into lambda x which is lambda times a x and a x is lambda x. So, it is lambda x. So, we can say that a square x equals to lambda square x. Okay. So, what we can say that uh, the if a has an Eigen value lambda and a corresponding Eigen vector is x, then a square has an Eigen value lambda square and the corresponding Eigen vector is x. Similarly, similarly we can say that a raised to power k is equals to lambda raised to power k into x you can simply find sim similarly find a cube a raised to power 4 and so on. So, what we have concluded? We have concluded that uh, if a has an Eigen value lambda and a corresponding Eigen vector is x then a raised to power k has a Eigen value lambda raised to power k and the corresponding Eigen vector is x. Now, next property is a and a transpose both have same Eigen values that is very easy to show you can see that Eigen values of uh, are given by this expression. Okay. Now, a minus determine a this matrix the transpose of this matrix is equals to a minus uh, the determinant of this is same as determinant of this because by changing interchanging rows and columns will not change the value of the determinant. Uh, this is equal to 0 it is given to us and this implies a transpose minus lambda i whole determinant is equal to 0. So, that lambda is not changing here whatever lambda we are we are having here same lambda we are having here that means, the Eigen values of a and a transpose are same. The next is the next is if you say that uh, a x equal to lambda x and suppose determinant of a is not equal to 0 that means, a is uh, invertible then you can take uh, a inverse both the sides then a inverse of a x will be equals to lambda times a inverse of x and this implies identity into x equals to lambda into a inverse of x and this implies a inverse of x will be 1 by lambda times x this is this is this is one or identity yeah. So, we can say that if a has an Eigen value lambda and the corresponding Eigen vector is x then a inverse has an Eigen value 1 by lambda and the corresponding Eigen vector is x. Okay. So, these are few of the properties of Eigen values which is stated here okay. and if g lambda is an Eigen value of g a where g lambda is a polynomial of lambda where x and x is an Eigen vector of g a correspond to Eigen value g lambda that, that is very easy to show again because uh, the third property itself states that if uh, g lambda is a polynomial of lambda then g lambda is an Eigen value 
of G A. Now, let us let us discuss these few uh, problems quickly. You see, if A is a singular matrix of order 2 and having trace 3, if, if it is a singular matrix means determinant is equal to 0. Determinant is nothing but product of eigenvalues. Product of eigenvalues equal to 0 means at least one of the eigenvalues is 0. Now, it is of order 2 that means it has it is having only two eigenvalues say lambda 1 and lambda 2 ok. So, so we can say a is of order 2 cross 2 having two eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2 then product of eigenvalues is equal to 0 because matrix is singular and trace is 3 trace is 3. So, here from here we can say that one of the Eigen value is uh, 0 say lambda 1 is 0. If lambda 1 is 0, so lambda 2 will be 3. So, the Eigen values are 0 and 3 of A. Eigen value of A transpose will be again 0 and 3 and Eigen value of A transpose square will be 0 and 9. Okay. The next one is if A is a 4 cross mat 4 cross 4 matrix of eigenvalues 1 minus 1, 2 minus 2, then the eigenvalues of uh, this how we can find you see eigenvalues of A are 1 minus 1, 2 minus 2 and B is given as it is 2A, it is 2A plus uh, A inverse minus I. I. So, it is some polynomial in uh, I mean it is some polynomial in uh, I mean uh, B I mean A. So, the Eigen value of B will be nothing but uh, if A has an Eigen value lambda then the Eigen value of B will be nothing but 2 lambda plus 1 by lambda minus 1. 2 A has 2 lambda Eigen value A inverse has 1 by lambda Eigen value and this Eigen value is 1. So, simply simply you can substitute here cross point to 1 we are having 2 plus 1 plus 1, 1 minus 1 is 2 for B cross point to minus 1 if you substitute minus 1 it is minus 1 minus 1 that is minus 4 cross point to 2 it is 1 plus 1 by 2 minus 1 that is that is 4 minus 1 by 2 that is 7 by 2 cross point to minus 2 if you are talking about minus 2 cross point to minus 2 it is minus 4 minus 1 by 2 minus 1 that is minus 4 minus 3 by 2 that is minus minus 11 by 2. So, these are the Eigen values corresponding to B. So, the third problem is simple if uh, A is a matrix of order n and such that A raised to power k is 0 where k belongs to a natural number then all these Eigen values are 0 because if one of because if any of the Eigen value is not equal to 0 of A then A raised to power k will not be 0. Okay. So, therefore, all the Eigen values of A must be 0. So, this is a result that uh, if A is a square matrix of order n having k distinct Eigen values lambda 1 up to lambda k let V i be the Eigen vector cross point to the Eigen value lambda i, i from 1 to k then the set this is linearly independent. So, let us try to prove this result you see lambda 1 lambda 2 up to lambda k are distinct Eigen values that means that means lambda i is not equal to lambda j for i not equal to j number 1. Now, the set we are considering this v 1 v 2 up to v k we have to show that this set is linearly independent v 1 is a uh, Eigen vector linearly independent Eigen vector cross point lambda 1 v 2 is a linearly independent Eigen vector cross point lambda 2 and so on. So, we will prove this by the method of induction. Okay. Let us uh, for, for n equal to 1 for k equal to 1 we are having v 1 and v 1 a single set is uh, I mean it is it is linearly independent I mean a singleton set is always linearly independent singleton non zero vector and v 1 is a non zero vector is always linearly independent. Now, we will assume that it is true for k equal to r. I mean this result hold for k equal to r that means the uh, set of k r vectors are linearly independent and we will try to show that this also holds for k equal to r plus 1. So, take the linear combination of these vectors now to in order to show that these are linearly independent. 
Now, you multiply both sides by matrix A. So, we can simply take A into alpha 1 V 1 plus A into alpha 2 V 2 and so on A into alpha R plus 1 V R plus 1 equal to 0. Now, A into V i is uh, lambda i into V i for all i because lambda i is the eigenvalue and the cosmic eigenvector is V i. So, we can simply write lambda 1 A V 1 is uh, lambda 1 V 1 similarly alpha 2 lambda 2 V 2 and so on up to alpha r plus 1 lambda r plus 1 V r plus 1. Now, say this equation 1 and this is equation 2 you can multiply 1 by lambda r plus 1 into 1 and subtract with 2. So, what we will obtain? We will obtain lambda alpha 1 into lambda r plus 1 minus lambda 1 v 1 and so on up to alpha r lambda r plus 1 minus lambda r times v r equal to 0. Now, we have already assumed that a set of uh, r vectors is linearly independent. So, this is some linear combination of uh, these linearly independent vector which is equal to 0. So, this implies alpha i is lambda r plus 1 minus lambda i equal to 0 for all i, but eigenvalues are distinct. So, this is not equal to 0. So, this implies alpha i equal to 0 for all i for all i means for i from 1 to r and when you substitute uh, alpha from 1 to r here with all 0 then you will get uh, you will get alpha r plus 1 v r plus 1 equal to 0 and since uh, v r plus 1 is not equal to 0 it is an eigenvector. So, this implies alpha r plus 1 equal to 0. So, we have shown that uh, all alpha is from uh, i from 1 to r plus 1 equal to 0 that means this set of vectors are linearly independent. So, in this lecture we have seen that some that what eigenvalues and eigenvectors are and some of the important properties of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, thank you.